So first up is our speaker, Cindy DeGoyer. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. She is talking about Poetry Lovers Unite. A speech about poetry sounds awfully dull, but Cindy wanted to give it a go. The topic was something she continued to mull to make rhyming accessible with a lot of good stuff. A passion for sound is how it began, a lover of Frost and also of Poe. Writing like them was always the plan, although extra words she tries to forego. So hearken to this tale of a poetry lover who was self-taught through reading the bards. You might find a poet in you to uncover, a poet might be in all of our cards. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. I grew up with poetry. All of us did, whether we realize it or not. There are nursery rhymes, song lyrics, lyric, limericks, and rap. But many of us don't consider ourselves to be poetry lovers. The very question, do you love poetry? makes us really uncomfortable, but it shouldn't. Poetry is a part of us. I can trace my love of poetry to my grandmother. Grandma T was born when memorization and recitation of poetry was an integral part of a child's education. As a young girl, I remember begging my grandma to recite the myriad of poems that she knew. One of my favorite was The Outlaw. I've never, I've looked for the author for years, but I've never been able to find him and I have no idea who wrote the poem. But it is the poem that taught me about love and kindness. The Outlaw is a poem about a horse who'd been abused but Jim Gray is able to tame him with love and gentleness. I can still hear my grandmother's voice as she began to recite, they brought him in the wild and fleet and nailed iron shoes upon his feet and on their shoulder burned their brand. They bridled him with reckless hand. He's, they, the bridle, they bridled him with reckless hand. The saddle girth grew close and tight. He's bad, they said, he'll make a fight. Then cried, now who'll ride this brute? Come on, you men, make ready, shoot. Oh, how I loved that story. Oh, how I loved the rhymes. Oh, how I loved my grandmother's voice as she recited. Then there was my mom. Grandma T must have passed on the poetry loving genes to her. My mother's poems were much more simple than my grandmother's. She made me laugh as she explained that there once was an elephant who tried to use the telephant. No, no, I mean an elephone who tried to use the telephone. And I loved it when she would read Shel Silverstein's poetry and where the sidewalk ends. But my mother's favorite poet was Dr. Seuss. I learned life lessons from the Lorax who loved nature and spoke for the trees and the Grinch who taught me the true meaning of Christmas. My mom knew that I needed such lessons and that they could be taught in a beautiful lyrical way. Those beginning poems primed me for all poetry. I learned from my dad about Edgar Allan Poe, William Blake, and T.S. Eliot. One of my favorite poems that my dad used to recite was The Cremation of Sam McGee by Robert W. Service. The poem explains that Sam McGee froze to death while in the North Pole searching for gold. I can still recite the beginning. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold, but the Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The Northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was a night on the marge of Lake Labarge. 
they cremated Sam McGee. Dad turned poetry interest into more of a compulsion for me. I became infatuated with the power of words and lyrics, but none of this made me an authority of, on poetry. It just made me a poetry lover. I love reading, listening, and reciting poetry, and I love how poetry connects us as a community. There are many ways to become a true poetry lover. But tonight I want to talk about absorbing poetry, sharing poetry, and writing poetry. I know we all grew up with poetry, but did we really absorb it? Did we roll around with it in the mud and get dirty with it? Did we let it penetrate our minds as like bubbles and clouds, or did we allow it to take us into new and imagined worlds? If the answer to these questions is no, don't worry, it's not too late. Absorbing poetry isn't as hard as it sounds. The simplest way to begin is to start by finding a poem and reading it, and then read it again, and then read it out loud and then listen to it and then think about it and at the end after that claim the poem as your own i invite you to take a poem you love into your heart and develop a vibrant relationship with it allow it to guide you and if you do this that poem can become a teacher that it and it's always with you. It can touch and change every moment of your life. Spending a time with a poem is a way of choosing who you're going to, what you're going to do with your attention. In this world of cell phones, email, on-demand television, our conscience is constantly being pulled. It can be refreshing and renewing to return to a poem that you have absorbed. When I focus on a poem I love, my thoughts stop spinning and become quiet. I find relaxation. The poem becomes a refuge from the world. After you have chosen your poem and immersed yourself in it, do it again. It's wonderful to have a lot of different poems at your disposal to fit where you are at life. A few months ago, I opened up and explained to y'all that I struggled with depression. I memorized a poem that I, and it developed a relationship that changed my life. At my darkest point, I struggled to pray. But the poem, I Need Thee Every Hour by Annie Sherwood Hawks became my lifeline to God. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee every hour in joy, or pain, come quickly and abide, for life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. After we've absorbed poetry, it is fun to share it. Two years ago, during the pandemic, I wanted to celebrate National Poetry Month which is in April. I decided to challenge my father to celebrate it with me since he is a poetry lover himself. Every day for an entire month, we posted on Facebook a poem that we loved. I even made a collection at the end of poetry using the poems that my dad and I shared. At the same time, I was reading them out loud every single day to my husband and my daughters and whoever else would listen to them with me. Sharing poems made me love them even more. I read them. I wanted everyone to feel the humor I felt as I laughed at the Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll and Bobby Gentry's Ode to Billy Joe McAllister created such a sense of loss and love that it ached my heart. Sharing these tender emotions brings people together and creates a shared community. We need to put poetry in people's hands. We need to put poetry in people's ears. We need to put poetry in people's mouths. 
Poetry has the ability to move and inspire and haunt and energize people, but it can't if they don't have access to it. We can help people access our poetry. Once we have absorbed and shared poetry, the next step is to try writing it yourself. Now, this is the really fun part. And I know that some of you might think I'm crazy and you might be scared of the process, but this really is the fun part. Try writing your own. Remember that all poetry is different and yours can be whatever you want it to be. No pressure to anything but feel and write the words. So one might ask, why should I write poesy? poetry. And there are a lot of great reasons. I came up with 10 reasons for writing poetry. Number one, poetry builds our brains. Poetry makes us smarter overall. It isn't just about reading and writing words, but it's also about understanding the sounds and meanings and emotions of them. When the brain has to put all these things together at once, it strengthens our brains. Did you know I know a lot of things that are genuinely true. I know a lot of feckless things, strange facts that seem askew. Tom Sawyer was composed upon a machine called a typewriter. In bulletproof Kevlar was designed by a lady, not a fighter. I know a lot of fruitless things that no one needs to know. I know a lot of curious things. It's an information I can bestow. Coca-Cola wasn't always brown. It was originally green. At first, marshmallows were medicine, a sort of sore throat vaccine. I know a lot of crazy things, strange things to pursue. I know a lot of silly things. Listen, and I'll share them with you. The toothpick capital is Maine, and vinegar can melt a pearl. Autophobia is the fear of never meeting the right girl. I know a lot of bizarre things. None of these scoops are untrue. I know a lot of offbeat things. Keep learning and you can know too. Maybe this silly poem I wrote can help make you feel smarter too and build your brain. Number two, another reason to write a poem is because it's therapeutic. We all know that my adorable three-year-old grandson moved to Idaho a few weeks ago. I cried for days. When they first told me for three whole days, I bawled my eyes out every time I looked at him. But in order to cope, I wrote a poem based on one of Spencer's favorite sayings. His favorite saying, oh, sad day. I'm hungry, he grumbles. I want fruit snacks, he grouses. Please, he growls. Not now, I say. Oh, sad day, he replies in dismay. No nap, he commands. Not tired, he contends. Please, he compels. Not now, I say. Oh, sad day, he replies in dismay. Don't go, he dictates. I won't go too, he decrees. Together always, he demands. Not now, I say. Oh, sad day, he replies in dismay. Oh, sad day, I mourn. Idaho's too far, I mark. My boy is absent, I moan. Oh, sad day, it's my turn to say. Oh, sad day seems so cliche. I miss him every day. Yes, I still miss my boy, but I smile 
and continue to use his favorite phrase to get me through the tough moments. As I say, oh, sad day. Thank you, Poetry, for the free therapy session. Poetry is versatile. Poetry can be about anything. I've written poems about being a mom, music, God, and even bugs. Whatever you are interested in, there's opportunity to write about it in poetry. I would dearly love to hear a poem from Charlie about flying into that sunset he described a few weeks ago. Or I challenge Izzy to write a poem about outer space and why we need a space station here. And who wouldn't love to hear a poem from Thomas about all the wisdom from his parents that he's told us about over the last few table topics? Here's a poem that I thought Sherry, unfortunately she's not here tonight, but I thought Sherry would enjoy this next poem because of her love of cleanliness. Lysol. Clean. Very, very clean. I have been an M. But why would you say that I'm OCD? This desperate urge to purify, sterilize, and disinfect requires dedication. I'm not sick. I'm enthusiastic about cleanliness. Talk about versatile poetry. Number four, poetry helps us understand ourselves. I thought I just really hated bugs. My dad is an entomologist and I've always hated bugs. But I really learned to understand myself when this poem was penned by me a few years ago. Psychopath. I am unstable. I am preoccupied with thoughts of devastation. My naive victims are delinquent. Hooligans, gripping the blunt object, I stalk my prey, quickly striking my unsuspecting enemies. They drop like fruit flies. I have caused a genocide of pesky insects in my kitchen. I am a psychopath. <laughs> Number five. Poetry helps express feelings and emotions. This seems an obvious reason to write poetry, but it really does help. Consider my feelings of despair, that moment that I penned um, a truly emotional moment. Despair and despondency crowd my mind for control. My spirit is a marble caught in a black hole. I can't ignore this feeling brought on from outside forces. Joy is completely out of reach. Distress just reinforces. My daughter conveyed the news with appropriate gentle tact. Melancholy promptly set in, making a dreadful impact. I wonder if I'll ever know peace of mind again. Until all is fixed, I'll just be sad till then. How can this gloom be rectified? Can I mend my broken heart? All would be well if only the Diet Coke would start. <laughs> Number six, poetry is creative. Another fun reason to write poetry is that it allows creativity to flow. Contrary to popular belief, though, we all have a creative streak. Being creative keeps you engaged. It helps reduce stress and helps improve our skills. As a teacher, I hated testing. I became a music teacher so that I didn't have to give tests. But when it came time to take the state test, I was required to walk up and down the aisles watching and monitoring students. It was terribly boring for me. And so, I decided to carry a notebook with me and write a poem. This was my result. Random thoughts during testing. What do cars think about all day in the parking lot? Do shells feel lonely when they're not in use? 
my elbow needs a Kleenex. I wonder if there are little people inside of outlets. What is their job when I plug in my toaster? My ear needs a Kleenex. What if seventh graders had three noses? One for smelling, one for breathing, and one just for show. My toes need a Kleenex. Why don't posters of musicians sing? Why don't posters of athletes trash talk? My chin needs a Kleenex. Who is the big bad wolf's hero? Do glasses really work or are they just a conspiracy? My belly button needs a Kleenex. What if rubber duckies try to take over the world? Why can't a law be passed that makes everyone wear yellow? I really like yellow. My brain needs a Kleenex. Poetry can also tell stories, our family history. This is a true short story that really happened eight years ago called the Belt Buckle Ballad. In the Colorado mountains lies a little town where the angels like to visit and no one seems to frown. This untainted community was our destination, the Switzerland of America, our day trip vacation. Grandma Bill with her grandkids, Katya, Sheila, and Shanae, made the two and a half hour trip to hike, swim, and play. Box Canyon Falls was breathtaking. God's power on display with waterfalls and animal life, a ge geological array. Swimming in a hot springs pool was next on our list. Floating, splashing, and volleyball games, you surely get the gist. We ended the day on Main Street, you're right, building up a thirst, spying a store that served old-fashioned drinks. The bottles of soda were dispersed. How to open the glass bottles? No one seemed to know. We looked around for a church key. Our thirst reached a plateau. Then the cute young man behind the counter came to our rescue. His belt buckle could open the pops. He really did come through. The girls were shocked and quite unnerved at the belt buckle trick. The look on their faces said it all. He must be a backwards hick. Grandma and I laughed till we cried. The girls blushed and turned red. I want one of those, Katya said. Which one, the clasp or toe head? Poetry can stretch our imaginations and poetry can help us use the language that we have around us and make it so much better. I recently took all the vocabulary I knew about games and decided to use those words to tell the story of my mother. Here's how I use the language since she loves words and Scrabble. It's called Scrabble in the Sky. Red Rover, Red Rover, sent Gay Drive right over. The first draft pick was made. The pink pawn in the white car meant the game had to be played. The playbook was fierce with instructions. Complicated rules gave her cold feet. Thank goodness the game was cooperative. Her mom helped her learn to compete. She bluffed her way through high school. The dice took her to Germany. Love, laugh, love laughter, anticipation, and awe. The expansion pack made her a wee. Her partner chosen, they continued to play, adding games to complete the team. A musician, a gardener, a scientist, an entrepreneur took turns in her dream. Rolling and moving, each player followed suit. Sometimes the game was fast paced, but her squad made a bet on Gaydra. And sometimes she delayed the race. Continuing to gain victory points, Gaydra battled on. In this life and death adventure, she frequently felt like a pawn. Though camp through campaigns and struggles to victory, the end game was nearby. When she wins, she'll step to the podium. She'll play Scrabble in the sky. So poetry lovers, unite. I challenge you to absorb poetry. Read it. 
learn it, study. And if you're up for it, I dare you to share poetry. Share it with your family. Share it with your friends. Share it with anyone who will listen. And if you're really motivated, I want you to write a poem. Writing poetry is really worth it. I dare you become a poetry lover.